Thank you, my friends. Thank you for that uh, wonderful welcome. And thank you for all the support you've shown. And thank you mostly for your extraordinary service uh, to this great country. Uh, thank you, Harold, for those uh, kind words. Uh, and I'd also like to thank someone else. Uh, Ralph, Ralph, can you get up here, please? Uh, Ralph Goodell, our Minister of Public Safety and Security. Uh, Ralph uh, generously gave up his speaking slot this morning so I could come and address you, and uh, I really uh, very much appreciate that, Ralph. Uh, before I begin as well, I do want to acknowledge the Canadian District Vice Presidents who are with us, uh, Dave Burry, uh, Fred Leblanc, and Lorne West. Thank you, guys. Where are you guys? There we go. Great to see you guys. Thank you for all the hard work you do on behalf of Canadian firefighters each and every day. When I was here last year, I made a number of commitments to you and to your members. We've been able to deliver on some of those things in our first five months in office. Others haven't been completed yet, but remain high on our government's agenda. And today, I'd like to take a look at where things stand on four issues that are important to your members and to our government. First, there's the anti-union legislation introduced by the previous government. We've already taken steps to repeal it. In fact, one of the very first pieces of legislation we introduced will do just that. <laughs> Bill C-4 will repeal two previous bills C-377 and C-525 that unfairly targeted unions like the IAFF, bills that unquestionably threatened to diminish and weaken the labor movement in our country. My friends, that kind of approach has no place in this century and it has no place in our government. The government... The government that I lead respects unions. It doesn't attack them. Nous comprenons que les syndicats ont eu un effet positif sur les travailleurs canadiens. Nous croyons qu'une approche équitable et équilibrée aux relations de travail au Canada bénéficie à tous les Canadiens. Je suis très fier des démarches législatives que nous avons déjà entreprises pour rétablir cet équilibre. Second, since forming a government, We've also followed through on our campaign commitment to restore funding for Canada's four heavy urban search and rescue teams. As you know better than most, it's always easier to respond to an emergency or recover from a disaster when we're prepared for them. And that's exactly what Canada's heavy urban search and rescue teams allow us to do. Whether responding to ice storms, floods, wildfires, or building collapses, these teams have proven invaluable in keeping Canada and our communities safe. And they will continue to do so thanks to the restored funding in Budget 2016. That brings us to the third issue, one that I know is critically important to you and to your members, a public safety officer compensation benefit. This is something that has been on our radar for a long time, thanks in large part to the tireless work of my friend and yours, Ralph Goodale. Ralph first introduced the idea of a compensation benefit back in 2012 as part of a private member's motion. At the time, it was an idea that received support from every party in the House. To me, that shows that there is a broad public and political support uh, for your members for the courageous men and women who put their lives on the line daily to keep Canadians safe. And more than that, there's support for their families who deserve some measure of financial security should the unthinkable happen. As many of you know, Ralph is now the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness. And it was my honor when preparing the mandate letter that will guide him in that new role to instruct him to enhance compensation benefits for public safety officers who are permanently disabled or killed in the line of duty. And we look 
forward to working with our partners to achieve this important objective. Fourth, last month's budget also confirmed our government's ongoing commitment to addressing the challenge of post-traumatic stress injury among first responders. We will continue to work with the provinces and territories to ensure that public safety officers have the support and treatment they need. Vous n'avez pas besoin de moi pour vous dire à quel point les conséquences du stress post-traumatique peuvent être dévastatrices. Plusieurs d'entre vous, ici dans cette salle, en connaissent trop bien les effets. Vous savez qu'elles nuisent à votre capacité de travailler et ont un impact sur votre famille et vos amis. Vous avez assisté aux funérailles de vos collègues premiers répondants, des gens qui ont incontestablement fait preuve de courage, mais qui étaient aussi humains et vulnérables. Jusqu'à maintenant, cette année, nous avons perdu 14 premiers répondants et 6 membres des forces armées en raison de suicide. C'est plus qu'un par semaine. I want you to know that our government understands that the trauma these men and women experience is a direct result of the work that we ask them to do, that we need them to do. We ask first responders to stand in harm's way to protect us and keep us safe. They deserve the best care, including the best mental health care that their country can provide. I hope this gives you a sense of what we've been able to accomplish so far. As I said, our government is just five months old, but I'm happy about the progress we've been able to make even in such a short time. Putting an end to legislation that unfairly targets unions, reinstating funding for heavy urban, heavy urban search and rescue teams, committing to do more to recognize community heroes and support their families when tragedy strikes. These are th and these are things that our government takes seriously because there is no more serious work than what your members do day in and day out. Every day, you work hard to make Canada's communities safer. Through that hard work, you remain resilient, compassionate, and always focused on serving others. On behalf of the government, and indeed, on behalf of all Canadians, thank you for all that you do. Merci beaucoup.